I see what everybody else is doing and I think I have an innate ability to say, you know what, I like this, 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 that, the other, but there's two or three things here that I don't particularly like. And I know everybody's gonna hate it and I know everybody's gonna question it, but I think I can, I can do this a little better or a little differently. And I think I have always had the confidence to do, um, to, to let that part of myself sort of come out because so many of my athlete friends are pioneers and people who did things differently themselves. If you look at any footage of the high jump event before 1968, everybody's going over the bar the same way. Forwards, barrel roll. And here comes Dick Fosbury. And he was doing what was comfortable for him and what in his mind was better. He was running to the bar and going over backwards. And I got a chance to sit on a plane with him for a very long flight. And I must have drove him crazy because I wanted to know not, I mean, I don't know anything about the high jump, but I wanted to know what the reaction was like. Like literally the entire planet is doing this event at the Olympics, go all the way down to high school, a certain way. And here you come to challenge that. And he said, yeah, of course, everybody thought I was nuts until I started to win. And then I broke the world record. And then I won the Olympic gold medal. Well, guess what? <laughs> Nobody does it the old way anymore. It's called the Fosbury flop. It's named after him. He will be forever and ever and ever the guy who looked at something that everybody else was doing one way and said, well, what about this? Every single year that I competed, my weightlifting plan varied because we would try a new thing here, learn something there, new recovery process here. It's the same thing in the medical field, is every single year, that process of learning and adapting and getting better should be continued. It's not for everybody else, it's for you, because that's what makes you feel good. That's what makes you, that gives you the rewards that you're seeking. When I started competing, there was a major doping problem in, in throwing and track and field. And I chose to be completely clean the whole time. And I knew that when I did that, I was going to lose medals and I was going to lose money because of that. But I was just going to do what I could do and if it was good enough, then so be it. Uh, there was no preparation uh, that I had for training that way. Most of the research and the training was based around athletes that were doing. So my coach and I were essentially writing things trying to learn everything we could from physiology, which was part of the reason I became a biology major, and try and change it from doping to true recovery. And I do believe that at this point in time, it's probably flipped from being 90% doping to 10% doping. I'm, and I think part of what we did is, is what caused that to happen. Looking back on my career, I definitely remember some times where I challenged the status quo whether it was the role of what an offensive lineman should be versus what an offensive lineman can do, whether it's being the one who can identify the defensive front and make a change to a call that can help protect the quarterback better than maybe what he doesn't see or maybe what somebody else doesn't see, your coordinator, because it's one thing to be on the field and in the moment. I constantly push that in my career, always challenge what we can give information-wise to help the rest of the team be more efficient or be more successful.